How's it going everyone? This is EK1 Gaming here and in today's video we're going to be showing you some of the improvements we have made to our creator setup. And when I say creator setup I mean content creation, streaming and general gaming setup. So if you're looking for something to give yourself that extra bit of edge or extra bit of oomph in your setup to make it stand out, to make productivity better, and to make it look better, sound better, then you are watching the right video. Now, before we get into the video, if you find it helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Also, if you wanna be kept up to date with any kind of tech videos, gaming videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell. Now, let's get straight into it. So the first product that we bought to basically up our gaming and, and content creation game is the Razer Viper Ultimate Mouse. Now you might be thinking that's not really like a game changer, but it actually is. So previously I've had a Corsair Iron Claw, a Sate Axe and a Logitech G40 something or whatever it was. All of them worked well in different ways but none of them was the complete package what I wanted. Now, of course, the Logitech mouse worked perfectly. It was very nice in my hand, but it was wired. The Corsair, so the Iron Claw, that basically was wireless, but it was bulky. It didn't feel nice, and the buttons were very difficult to get to, so it wasn't perfect. The Sage Axe, that was wired again, and it malfunctioned after like a year, so forcing me basically to buy a new mouse. So this mouse was in my cart for, I don't know, I reckon about six months right now or in my wish list on Amazon for about six months and I was watching the price. Now, at first it started off around £150, so I was like, that's a little bit expensive for a mouse and a docking station, but I wanted wireless, I wanted to be able to charge it overnight just on a simple dock and I wanted a nice design, you know, of a mouse. So this is an ambidextrous mouse, which is perfect, it has buttons on both sides, as you can see and it also is very light. So for me, it was what I wanted, but I just didn't want to pay the price at the beginning. So it went down in price. We managed to get this mouse for 99 pounds with the docking station, which to me is an absolute bargain. I think it's gone slightly up now to like 120, but make sure you just check the links below to see if the, if the price has gone up and down. It will automatically do that for you. So don't worry, you'll get the best price on the mouse. Now let's take a look at some of the features and what it looks like and what it can do. Now this is an ambidextrous mouse and it only weighs in at 74 grams. Now this does go up to 78 grams if you buy the special editions such as the Cyberpunk one, but overall it's a very light and incredibly comfortable to use mouse. Now spec wise they do not lack in that department at all. They do say you get around 70 hours of battery life, however when I tested it I got just over 60 hours, but I mean that's still pretty good. It has five onboard memory profiles so you can save your configurations and eight programmable buttons which can be configured with the Razer software. Now the Razer software is also where you'll be able to see how much charge you have in your mouse, set macros and change your RGB settings to make you a professional gamer in just a few seconds. It also has a 20,000 DPI with a huge 99.6% resolution accuracy, which really does come in clutch when competing. On top of that, you do have a 0.2 millisecond response time, meaning when you click, you click. So overall, it's an amazing mouse, and of course you have the docking station to charge this thing up overnight if you want to. It's stylish, practical, and it works like a dream. I have to say this is probably the best mouse I have ever owned so far. So now we've got a brand new mouse. What else do you need to go with it? A brand new keyboard, of course. So this is the first 60% keyboard that I have ever owned. And you know what? I wish I'd have just bought one of these before. I really do. Now this is from Red Dragon. This is the K530. And honestly, it's probably the best keyboard I've ever, ever owned. Now, I used to be a sucker for getting a full-size keyboard with a, with a wrist rest and all that and trying to get myself comfortable for when I'm gaming. I have never been more comfortable gaming than when I've been using this. It's so light, you can move at any angle you want. Like, I do angle mine slightly while I'm using it for gaming. Um, it's just because it's a comfortable position for me. The weight of it is actually really weighty. 
so it doesn't slide around on the mouse mat and you know it's small it's wireless it also can be used wired if you use a USB-C lead which comes with it you just charge it up use it all day and then charge it up overnight again so for me the keyboard is a must have if you're interested in gaming especially for a lot of like office work typing I wouldn't I would not suggest a 60% because it does take a lot of getting used to the buttons but honestly for gaming it's absolutely perfect let's take a look now in depth of what this keyboard can do so the main pros for this keyboard of course is the 60% in size meaning it's easier to use for me now it also has the ability to change switches and keys which is one of the things that got my eye it really did catch my eye being able to customize your own keyboard now the rgb functions are great they offer a number of ways to customize the keyboard using the software provided by red dragon the battery life's good it uses a usb c charger which for me should be standard now with any product and it doesn't really take long to charge to full so having the wired and wireless option really does help so if you get caught out mid game you can quickly plug in and carry on this isn't only for computers either it works with most bluetooth devices tablets phones all that good stuff included so just be aware it does not come with a dongle so if you don't have built-in bluetooth in your pc you're going to need to pick up a dongle yourself so you can pick one of these up for around five pounds or five dollars on amazon and alongside that it works with different devices you know so you don't need to keep reconnecting the keyboard you have three different preset buttons so bluetooth one two and three so you can link each button to a different device meaning you can quickly switch over to your ipad your phone and back to your pc without having to do the whole connection process again overall it's an amazing purchase from red dragon i used to use their shiva full keyboard and i loved it so for this for me it was no brainer to go to this 60 percent and use red dragon again i'll probably invest in some other keys though as the ones that i did purchase didn't allow the rgb through them so you can't see the lighting through the keys that i put in so now we've had a keyboard a mouse what else can we do to improve this gaming setup or this content creator setup. Now this next item is probably one of the most popular items with streamers, YouTubers, content creators. It is a little bit expensive, but it's worth every penny. That is the Go XLR Mini. Now the reason I got the Mini is because I didn't want to spend 400 pounds on the one with additional buttons and a different additional functions. Eventually, will I get that? Probably yes, because I have used this more than I expected to. Now, at first I used to watch people and they were using these, I'd think, nah, that's not really for me, that's just a mimic, you know, you could do that virtually on the computer, which you can do it virtually on the computer if, with different software, but if you could just move a button up and down, surely that beats having to click a button, go onto a different screen, uh, all this while you're gaming or while you're working. So for me, the Go XLR Mini is a must have now. It's definitely a major part of my setup. Audio on YouTube or on Twitch or wherever you're gonna produce content or even just generally talking to your friends is very important because you can have the best looking picture, but if my audio was bad, you wouldn't watch the video because you watch the video to know what I want to say or what I am saying. You want me to tell you about things. You've probably clicked this video because you're looking at different things like different streaming upgrades or best tech for your streaming setup or just gaming setup. So if I, you couldn't hear me, you couldn't understand me, it wouldn't be the best video and you'd probably just go and find someone else. And the likelihood is they probably would have used something like that to make it sound a lot better. So right now we're just going to go through some of the functions that the Go XLR can do. I'm probably going to do a full video on the Go XLR, how I have it set up with my microphone, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's take a look at what this one has to offer for all of you gamers, creators and general streamers. So the Go XLR, as well as being a favorite for many content creators and streamers for a while now, offers some of the best audio control in the game for its price point. To dumb it down a little bit, the device basically creates multiple virtual USB audio devices, meaning on the device you can change the volume of the mic, your chat party, the game sound, music, and most other things just by moving the sliders up and down. The device has four faders, a mute button for each channel, a mic mute button and also a cheeky swear word beep button if you can't control yourself. 
Now, this is particularly handy for streamers who may want to play music low in the background or even mute their party chat at the click of a button. It works great physically, and also the software allows more customization to how you sound, such as adding bass, treble, and other additions to your live mic voice. I've been waiting to get one of these for a while now, and finally I made the purchase, and I can't even think of how I got on before having this one. This makes things super easy and accessible for me, and you can link it with the Stream Deck also. It's a good go-to option if you have an XLR mic. Connecting via XLR is a great benefit, and it has better sound quality and room for customization over just using a simple USB mic. So now with the Go XLR, what are you going to need? You're going to need one major thing. That is a brand new mic or an old mic if you've got one. But for me, I went for the Shure MV7. Now this is Shure's new mic and this mic actually really appealed to me because it was suggested to me by somebody who's uh, one of my subscribers, Forrester. He kind of mentioned it to me. He said, look, there's this, this new mic, the MV7. It's pretty cool. It's USB and it's XLR. And I was thinking, wow, both? Like I have never seen a mic like that before. So I was like, okay, I'll have a look. And now this come in at just, I think about 260 pounds, maybe 250 pounds, something like that, something around that price point. But you'll know from the links in the description below anyway. So I thought, oh wow, this is expensive. This is really expensive for a mic. Before that, I had the Rode NT USB. Before that, I've had the Razer Siren, and I've also had the Blue Yeti. So I've been always had like a decent sound in, um, in, in audio. However, this literally took it to the next level. And I don't know if it's just because of this or because I use this with the XLR, or the Go XLR, should I say. I don't know what happened, but my audio just went boom. It just went so much better, even if I do say so myself. Of course, I have to tell you, we are not using this mic for this video. I'm using a Rode Wireless Go wireless microphone for my camera. So this is not the sound coming out of this. The sound coming out of this will sound better than the Rode Wireless Go. And if you've watched any of my streams or any of my gaming videos, I do use the uh, Shure microphone on that. So let's take a look, see what this thing can do, see if it's the right fit for you and your audio needs. So this mic really is a multi-purpose mic. It gives you a solid USB connection and also the ability, if you're like me, to use the XLR functions. I personally haven't seen many mics with both ports, so this was a pretty cool feature for me to see. Now the mic itself is a little bit on the expensive side, but you do pay for what you get. Now Shaw has a great reputation amongst the creator world, podcast world, and generally. There's never been many issues I could find online, and this is why I chose the MV7. It not only looks great, it also has the touch controls on the microphone itself to lower the mic levels, headphone levels, and mute when using it via USB. It also comes with two 10-foot USB leads, one of them having micro to USB-C, and the other one micro to a standard USB. It does not, however, come with the XLR cable, which for this price range, I would have liked to have seen. Another thing about the mic is you need to get yourself a better pop filter. It does have one, but it's not great. I purchased the Shure one off Amazon for, I believe it was an extra £30, but we may go further into detail on this on another video. Apart from it sounding great, it also has its own software, allowing you to change the distance you speak from and also other options. This is presets and customizable options, but as we're going to use the Go XLR, we don't really need to change much on here. It's more for when you're using it as a USB microphone. So last but not least, we've got the mouse, keyboard, Go XLR, microphone. What else do you need to up your game? Yes. A headset so I did a lot of videos recently and in the last kind of six months on EPOS Sennheiser and their gaming headsets this is not going to be the same kind of not the same we're not talking about a gaming headset now with the setup that we have here with the Shure mic the Go XLR we don't want a gaming headset because a gaming headset has a microphone on it I don't need a microphone so what you want to do is get yourself a nice studio headset. Now you can go budget, which I have, but it's not budget in quality, or you can go really expensive and have the best of the best. However, for me, I thought, right, 
There's a brand that I know and trust, which is Sennheiser. They do studio headphones as well as gaming headphones. I love all of their gaming headphones, so why not give them a chance and let's purchase one of their older studio headsets. Now, this is the bad boy. This is the HD206 studio headset from Sennheiser. And I've got to tell you, the sound is incredible. Literally cost me, I think, £32, which I thought was really cheap. I mean, it's a no frills headset, right? The wire doesn't detach from it. It's wired, of course, because you're going to plug it into your GoXLR. But this, for me, is basically so I can hear myself when I'm doing my uh, streams and videos, so I can hear my own voice, to know if I'm shouting or whether I'm not loud enough or maybe I'm breaking up on the mic, I don't know. But basically, I use that to monitor my own voice, to monitor my chat, my Discord chat, the game sound, and any kind of alerts and stuff like that that's going on. So when you first get the headset, it's pretty much just a very bog standard box with nothing more than a headset and a little bit of paperwork. That's really all you need. With the price tag as ridiculously low as it is, that's pretty much what you want, but it does sound great. Now I have many gaming headsets, but this one is a studio headset, as I said before, meaning I plug this into my Go XLR to either hear my chat game and etc. This picks up the sound good and it is very good quality even when gaming, listening out for those footsteps. Now remember with headsets, they also need wearing in. So out of the box, this does sound good, but always leave your headset on for around five to eight hours playing music or whatever through it just to wear the headset in because the sound quality does get better the longer you leave it. Five to eight hours is a recommended time to actually wear it in. Now, Sennheiser has been a great brand for me to work with a lot over the past year, and usually they would simply send me the headset out. But me being me, I simply just purchased this one for myself because one, I love their products, and two, it's budget friendly. It's really worth the money. The one downside is that the wire doesn't disconnect from the headset itself. But apart from that, they are really comfortable. They're great sized ear cups, even for people with ears like mine, and easy to use and an absolutely amazing value. So now that's pretty much the end of the video. I did just wanna say, if you found any items that you think that I haven't mentioned, like you might think, well, you've got the, you know, you've got the Shaw mic. Have you tried this budget friendly option? Let me know in the comment section below if you find something that you think, hold on a minute, EK hasn't thought about that because the likelihood is I can probably get hold of one or purchase one and we can do an in-depth video and do a comparison and all that good stuff. And um, one of the things that we've done to improve the whole channel as, you know, as a whole is, is the thing that you're watching us on. It's, it's the new camera we've got and the new audio we've got for the camera, which is now our videos will be in 4K. So that's a big improvement for us, right? Although I don't have a 4K monitor yet, I'm kind of waiting for the monitors, but we can just talk about that in a different video. But honestly, if you need to know anything about any of the products that we've discussed today, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. I will answer every single question there. Take care, everybody. Happy upgrading, and I'll see you all in the next video.